haven't seen you for a long time. Bobby Glenn Brown has been an integral part of St. Michael's Church ever since he was baptized there three years ago. He's a very large presence. He's uh, in the choir, he's a cantor, he has a beautiful voice and he's also been on the parish council he's a lector he's done more in the time he's been at st michael's than probably a good portion of the congregation however despite his years of service st michael's pastor father larry van dam asked him to curb his involvement in the parish after it was learned that bobby and his partner of 31 years exchanged vows at a commitment ceremony the day before yesterday when i went to church i was uh, greeted by father larry if you will um, and was explained that because of the fake ceremony that I had, that I committed myself to another man, that I would no longer be able to lecture, canter, or sing in the choir, that um, if I wanted to participate or worship, I could sit in the vestibule and listen, but that I wasn't allowed to be part of any ministry at the church anymore. Father Van Dam issued a statement through a fellow pastor's blog clarifying his decision. He says, quote, Among our members at St. Michael's Catholic Church in Marquette, we have valued parishioners with same-sex attractions who serve in many capacities, including liturgical ministries. As their pastor, I love all of my parishioners, whatever their circumstance. At no point have I instructed anyone to stand at the back of the church, the cry room, or in the vestibule. Reports of this having occurred are a misunderstanding. Still, it's a confusing matter given the fact that most people in the church knew of Bobby's orientation days, months, even years before the falling out. In the Catholic Church, we, uh, we love and embrace and want to include among our members persons with same-sex attraction. And so having uh, same-sex attraction in no way um, you know, disqualifies someone from you know, being a member, of, a member of the church. And we also give people the benefit of the doubt that uh, people intend to, to, to live chastely and, uh, you know, and so forth. So we always give people the benefit of the doubt. But Bishop Durfler says that to the church, having same-sex attractions and acting on them publicly are two different matters. The bishop says it was the commitment ceremony and only the ceremony that disqualified Brown from ministry. If someone were to give uh, some type of, of public affirmation that it's morally okay to act on those attractions, that's where the departure would be. And it, you know, so the commitment ceremony would indicate that it would be uh, you know, permissible to act on those attractions and that's where the disconnect is from the church's teaching. Uh, at one point they asked if Don and I could live together as brothers and um, no, I couldn't because in those words I feel it's incestuous and that's not what I want. That's not who I am and that's not what we were together for. I mean, Several of our family members um, have been married and divorced several times, and a lot of them have asked us for advice, and we give it willingly. Like I said, we spent 30 years together, and we want to live another 31 together or whatever, and to be told that you can't worship or aren't welcomed somewhere to worship where you've, you've been so welcomed, that in itself sends a mixed message. The incident has caused Brown and a number of other regular churchgoers to rethink their affiliation with the parish. Other people that I have talked to are very upset about it. They just, they can't believe it's happened for one thing. And I'm not sure where I'm going with things. I am looking at options. I mean, I was born and raised Catholic and have been very active with things, but I just, I, at this time, I just feel very, very crushed with what's been going on because I don't think it's right. And it's like, who are we to judge? And they've been together 30 years. They love each other. And I know a lot of other gay and lesbian couples who have been together, are loving families, have children. And it's just, you know, it, it's just not right what's going on. Yeah, it's a mixed message. And I think it's the wrong message. Um, there is a psalm that says, Loving and caring and forgiving are you, O Lord. And that's the message that needs to be brought to the students at Northern, especially to a church that's so close to campus in a place where they should feel uh, welcomed and um, able to worship.
and that message is being lost. Bobby has since decided to leave the parish in search of a more accepting place of worship, and a few others might be following suit. A week after Brown's removal, a signless sit-in protest was held outside the parish to show solidarity and support of Bobby Glenn Brown. The movement has not only taken on a physical presence in Marquette, it's also spread to the internet, where an online petition has been created requesting that Pope Francis review the parish's decision to remove Brown from his duties. The petition, hosted on change.org, currently has about 150 supporters with a goal of 1,000. Bobby is asking all those who support him to sign the petition after his sponsor and a deacon recently met with the bishop on his behalf. He says that during the sit-down, the bishop instructed Bobby's representatives that he needed to publicly proclaim chastity, separate from Don, and move out of their mutual home. We attempted to talk to the bishop and Father Van Dam about the meeting, but the bishop only had this to say. I reached out to Bobby Glenn and invited him to meet with me for a pastoral conversation. He is welcome in the Catholic Church, and I will continue to keep him in prayer. The bishop did say that he could sit in a pew, but according to Bobby, Father Larry said he is not to take communion. For ABC 10 News, I'm Rick Tarsitano.